G'day, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about some terrible, terrible, well I won't use the word journalism, it doesn't qualify as journalism, in my honest opinion. This is the worst I've seen for a very long time. Written by David Hambling, who claims he is a South London based technology journalist, consultant and author. I would dispute those claims on the basis of what I've seen in print here. This is absolutely outrageous. It's published by Forbes. Forbes, um, people like to think it is an authoritative news source. It's not. I've seen so much dross and inaccurate information and bullshit come out of Forbes. That I put it right up there with the Daily Mail in terms of credibility. And in fact, the, the, the fact that this is the editor's pick, this article is the editor's pick, just shows how bad Forbes has got. It, 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 and they have the, the audacity to put a firewall up. This stuff is behind a firewall. You've got to pay to read this crap. Anyone who pays to read dross like this is an idiot. Honestly, that's my honest opinion. But let me read the first paragraph for you. And I can do that, even though it's copyrighted, because this is fair use. I'm critiquing this. The first paragraph says... I want to scream as loud as I can that Congress and the FAA need to act to stop the next generation threat. Timothy Bean, CEO of the counter drone company Fortum Technologies, told me the threat is autonomous drones that anyone on the planet can get from Amazon or Best Buy. Oh my God. Now look at the headline. The next 9-11 could be a mass drone attack. Here's how we can stop it. This is Bullshit. This is utter, utter bullshit. Excuse my French. I don't, I'm not apologizing. I'm just asking you to excuse it. This is, I, I cannot believe that this is such fear mongering. This is what the hobby has to deal with. We have someone here, a hack. I'm going to call him a hack. David, you're a hack. You really are. You've just, you have no credibility as a journalist because I'll show you why as we go through this. But um, he has taken this guy, Timothy Bean, Mr. Bean. And this Mr. Bean knows less than Rowan Atkinson's character. This is unbelievable and you look at it this is not objective this is not an objective thing this is a subject this is a marketing man he's a ceo of a counter drone company of course he's going to say drones are dangerous drones are the enemy drones will kill us all in this you buy our technology from fortem technologies this guy is as biased as it comes and i very much get the impression that mr bean may have contacted mr hambling and said look i've got a story for you how about this mr hambling has thought well it looks like he's a contributor rather than a staff member so he's a freelancer perhaps he thought, oh, anniversary of 9-11, it'll be a topical story, terrorist attacks. I can write a clickbait story, sell it to Forbes or somebody, make a bit of money with virtually no effort. I think that's what's happened here. So he's just become a hack that's looking for the bottom line, looking for a dollar. Um, the elements of the fourth estate, out the window, none of the ethics, none of the morality, nothing. Let's just make a buck. And that's what it looks like to me he's done. So... Um, and all the way through this article, Mr. Bean is quoted. Mr. Bean, basically, this is an article about what, what Mr. Bean thinks. The CEO of a counter drone company, a counter UAS company. Who gives a damn what he thinks? I'm sure he thinks that everybody should buy his technology and so he can retire to the Bahamas in the style to which he'd like to become accustomed. That's what Mr. Bean thinks. It doesn't matter a jot. And if Mr. Hambling was a journalist, he would have checked the claims made by Mr. Bean. He would have verified the... the, the, uh, the the presentation that Mr. Bean has given, he would have checked all the figures and facts and claims to see that there was veracity behind them. But it doesn't seem to me he's done an ounce of work on this. He's taken everything at face value and just published it. And this isn't even put up as an opinion piece. It is therefore, by implication, a news piece. We are supposed to believe that what we read here is fact. And that's not true. It is opinion. But it doesn't say opinion. This is bullshit. This is what the media does now. It dresses up opinion and press releases as news. And that is absolutely unethical. When the fourth estate was a thing, these people would have been kicked out. They would not have been allowed to be members of the fourth estate, but the fourth estate has gone the way of the dodo. Money's far more important. So Mr. Hamling has seen a way to make a quick buck by writing a freelance story, perhaps, that, that he could flog to Forbes, and Forbes has seen an opportunity to get a clickbait headline they can use to sell advertising to, to whoever this is, SpaceX, to, or to Flight, and there's probably a whole lot of others, to Rove, and all these other companies that are paying for this story. This is terrible. Anyway, let's, let's move on a little bit. Because, as I said, um, one of the things is, is doing some research. And... and um, this is an example here. He says, his fear, this is Mr. Bean we're still talking about, of course, his fear is that the next event might be a drone attack causing mass casualties. As with 9-11, everyone is aware of the possibility, but adequate protection is not in place. Well, guess who would be trying to flog adequate protection? Of course, it's Mr. Bean. And so why did not Mr. Hambling, why didn't he say, well, you say might. Can you give us some idea of the probability of this? What, have you done the research? Have you done a risk analysis? What is the, um, the, the 
possibility of a drone attack using, causing mass casualties with a store-bought drone. We know. We, we fly these damn things. You go down to Best Buy, because remember it mentions Best Buy up here at the start. If you go down to Best Buy and pick yourself up a Phantom... No, no, no. What's most popular? Mavic 2 Air. Or Ma no, sorry. Um, what is it? Mavic Air 2. If you pick up one of those, how much high explosive can you put on that thing? It will carry a maximum of probably, I don't know, maybe a couple of hundred grams of payload. Now, how can you cause mass casualties with 200 grams of explosives? You can't. You can't do that. And this is why terrorists have been using things like um, SUVs, trucks, and even pressure cookers to pack full of explosives because that can cause mass casualties. Not a store-bought drone. I'm sorry, that's bullshit. And, but, I mean, let's say, how would I know? What am I, what's, my, um, what's my credibility? How, how can I speak about this with some authority. Well, let's just, let's go back. Let's go back um, to here. In 2002, I published this, the low-cost cruise missile, in which I carefully detailed that way back then, 20 years ago, you could already build what amounted, what amounted to a drone that could be used to perform attack by terrorists. Terrorists could build their own drones and use them to attack with a range of up to a thousand miles from the launch point, right? This I considered was a real possibility. And to prove that it was a real possibility, I built one in my own backyard. In fact, it was, um, it was uh, reported by the world's media. Um, the Guardian reported it. Um, because I built one in my own backyard, and who else reported? I had some. I, there's a few things here. I don't know. This one was the ABC, is it? Um, in Australia or something? They reported. Most of the world's media, including the BBC, all covered the, this fact that I had highlighted this risk, and to prove it, I'd built my own low-cost cruise missile powered by a Pulse jet. I proved that this was a possibility 20 years ago, and I raised the concern. And I'm very pleased to say that it hasn't happened. Now, if the terrorists have had this opportunity for the last 20 years and haven't used it, you've got to ask yourself, why would that be? Why have they not used their own drones to launch attacks? Well, the reality is, just as I pointed out, if you're going to use a store-bought drone, it's going to be ineffective because it's such a tiny payload, you can't do a snot load with it. Um, but this this guy, Mr. Hambling, didn't even query, you know, sort of what, how much explosive could you carry on a drone from Amazon or Best Buy? Because he wasn't interested in producing an objective researched piece of journalism. He was interested, by the look of it, in just producing a quick thing he could flick off for a quick buck to any tatty tabloid publication that would put a clickbait headline on it and, and make some money out of it. That's, that's not good enough. And as a hobby, we are the ones who suffer. We suffer from this because the media, the, the public, the great unwashed who don't know, will look at this headline and they'll say, we need to ban drones. We need to, we need to clamp down on drones. We need more regulation. We need remote ID. We need network remote ID. You can't let these drone flyers blow us out of existence because they're going to do it. They're going to be, terrorists are going to buy these things and kill us all. Ah, oh, what do you do? Now, in fact, I found another piece now, which just it just speaks to the the crap that this report is. Um, where did I see it? It's down here somewhere. They talk about the um, the slaughterbots. Remember that video, slaughterbots, that was on YouTube. Um, here we go, slaughterbots video. Um, it says here. Um, Consumer drones fitted with grenades or other weapons have already carried out many attacks in Iraq and elsewhere, and large-scale attacks have been vividly depicted in the movies and celebrated in Slaughterbots video. Oh, so if something's in the movies, it poses a threat to us, does it? We've seen aliens landing in science fiction movies, but we're not all running around scared about being invaded from Mars, are we? No, we're not. <laughs> movies, you can't bring this in and suggest that it is a viable, justifiable fact. It's in the movies. And the Slaughterbots video was roundly condemned by anyone who knew anything about drones because it was just absolute bullshit. So, but he brings this in, he doesn't do the research. And yes, grenades have been used in places like Iraq and in some other places, but to very little effect. If for every time a drone was used, there have been tens of thousands of times that a mortar or an improvised explosive device or, or a pickup truck laden with explosives or a suicide bomber has done something like that. Drones have been such a an ineffective tool that they really haven't been used. They've been used just as, you know, and then I think what happened, they used them and found they didn't work that well, so they went back to the old things. We're not seeing drones used as effective tools by terrorists, but Mr. Um, Hamlin hasn't bothered to do his research, hasn't bothered to quantify any of this stuff, hasn't bothered to challenge any of the assertions made by Mr. Bean, and so this is a piece of crap. This piece, this, this is a 
one of the worst bits of fear-mongering I've seen in a very long time. Forbes should be ashamed. Mr. Hambling is a hack, in my honest opinion, doesn't deserve any of these titles. I would not hire this man as a consultant to tell me the time, even if I gave him my watch. This is terrible. Mr. Hambling, you deserve to apologise to the entire hobby, the entire drone community, for, for, for this piece of crap you've written here. In fact, I would suggest to people, he, he has his Twitter account in here, um, f f go and tell him what you think. Do you think his work is, is great? He says, follow me on Twitter. Check out my web. Oh, he's got a website too. I, I would suggest that in the politest um, possible way, don't be offensive, don't be rude, don't swear at him. Just tell him that you think what he's doing is, is not good. That's it. Just, just be polite. Be, you know, kill him with kindness and say, Mr. Hambling, you do not deserve the title of journalist. Your, your opinion piece was, was not labelled as such and you did no research on the facts. It was a cheap attempt to earn a buck. And it, it, is, it is such a um, disrespectful thing to the people who died in 9-11. This is obviously trying to leverage the fact that we're on the 10th anniversary of 9-11. It's a cheap attempt to make money out of all those people who died in the 9-11 attacks. Ooh, ooh, it's the 10th anniversary. How can we get a clickbait story to learn us money so our advertisers will give us dollars? No, this is just terrible. Forbes, you should not be doing this. You should not be insulting the memories of those people by trying to spin a buck out of an opinion piece dressed up as a news story and even giving it editor's pick. I just, as someone who's been involved in the news industry off and on and as a journalist for, for decades, I, I am just so ashamed to be any, in any way related to an industry that does this. This is absolutely atrocious. Anyway, I'll probably put some links in the in the uh, description of this video. I urge you to go and have a look. I was hoping to do a really upbeat video today, but then I read this and I just got so pissed off with the crap that we're facing. And as a hobby now, as you would expect, I am currently working on ideas to counter this kind of misinformation, this kind of um, these attacks on our hobby. And I have a couple of things in the back of my mind. I'll probably mention them in a later video, but we do need to do something. We can't just sit around and let the media slander and libel us into this kind of situation, uh, tell lies about us, dress up opinion, ill-informed, Ill commercially motivated opinion pieces as news. It is not acceptable. I think you should write to Forbes and tell them also that y you are completely um, outraged by their uh, insult to the principles of the Fourth Estate and the insult of the memory of those who died in the 9-11 attacks. I honestly think that is what should happen. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully we'll have some flying videos soon. Um, Trouble is the weather's against us at the moment. Eventually, eventually we'll go flying again. In the meantime, fly safely. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.